Hey there everybody, this is your favorite science guy, the old Mr. Sawchuck. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick look-see here at where we can find this erosion lab activity. So we're going to go into Schoology, download from the Earth's Structures Unit 3, Weathering, Erosion Deposition Lab. WED does not stand for Wednesday this time, it stands for Weathering Erosion Deposition Lab. You are going to download that. Once you've downloaded that, it's going to look something kind of like this, and you'll see it right there. Once you've done that, you are going to have it easy from here on out, because instead of making you fill out all three sheets of questions, you're only going to have to write down just this first top four here. So number one, weathering. What happened when we added water to the pile of sand physically? Two, erosion, what happened to the sand? Three, deposition, what happened to the sand over the course of the lab? Did it continue to move or did it end up depositing itself someplace? What was the cause of these things? And four, why is it important to understand how sand, dirt, mud travel through with a flow of liquid, water, or oil? You can answer that on the back or if you're online, you can just answer it right there online. So let's go ahead and switch over here and let's answer question number one. Weathering. What happened when we added water to the pile of sand physically? So let's go ahead and take a quick look. See here, I've got my pile of sand. I want to show you all real quick what uh, wind weathering looks like just because I can. Of course, that's just when the wind moves stuff around or makes things move. What's that? You said you couldn't see it too good? Okay, don't worry. I got another option there. We can add these handy dandy sprinkles and that should help us to see it considerably better. You know what? There's not that many left. I'm going to hang on to them just in case I get a cupcake later. So add those sprinkles and I can see them kind of blowing around inside of here. So the weathering is when the sprinkles break off of the rest of that sand and start to move around. The erosion piece is when those sprinkles are actually up, flying around and moving, and the deposition is where they end up landing. So you'll see that there are some that landed down here that maybe I hadn't put there before. And that's essentially the whole entire lesson. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but with water instead of with wind. So the electricals on the side. No need to get electrocuted today, even though some kids would think that was hilarious. It would be correct. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add just water to our cup here. And this is my pile of sand. This is for question number one. So you're going to be writing down what exactly is happening with the water and the sand physically. It looks like there's a little rock in the way there. I hope that rock moves. That'd be really inconvenient if it stayed there the whole time. Let's try my super expensive tool to move rocks. There we go. So what do we see happening with that sand as the water comes through? What are you seeing happen? Okay. Whoa, it's like magic Titanic. Cool. So there's, uh, there's number one there. You're answering that question. What happened when we added water to the pile of sand? You're going to fill that out where it says, number one, what happened when we added water to the pile of sand? Sounds pretty easy. Number two, erosion. What happened to the sand? So looking again, what happened to the sand? Did it stay in the same place? Did something else happen to it? So let's look again. What's happened to that sand right now? Is it staying in the cup? It's sure not. By the way, thank you to Wawa for... Uh, free coffee on Tuesdays. Got to give my Wawa's a shout out there because do love their coffee. So what happened to the sand? Number three, deposition. What happened to the sand over the course of the lab? Did it continue to move? Is it still moving now? Or did it end up depositing itself someplace else? What was the cause of these things? So there's number three. What ended up happening to that sand? Once you've got number three written down, we'll move into number four here, which is actually 
Maybe my favorite question on all of them. It's worth two points. Number four. Why is it important to understand how sand, dirt, mud travel with a flow of liquid like water or oil? You're going to put your answer on the back. If you're typing it online, you're just going to type your answer below. So I want you to think about why it's important to understand how sand, dirt, mud travel with the flow of water. So let's just see uh, the difference between when the sand is up here versus down here and what happened in this middle part here. While you're filling that out, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about cementation and compaction. So weathering, of course, is when the water gets broken down, loosens up, and starts to move. Erosion is the actual movement of the particles, as we saw it move down here. And then deposition is when those particles get deposited down at the bottoms. And cementation and compaction is when they start to stick together and form rocks like this. Now, over time, there'll be more and more rocks sticking together. It'll be less fluid and less liquid and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it'll get larger and larger as more things land on it and cement to it and more pressure gets pushed onto it until eventually you get a big old stinking rock like this. All these rocks, by the way, are from the beach where I had shells and I had other stones and all kinds of things making these rocks. And now you can even add sprinkles to those rocks because they're blue and red and colors. Cool. So that is the entire lab, the entirety of it, from adding water at the top to it eroding on down to the deposition at the bottom where the water was deposited down there at the bottom. Now, I've got some kids who are like, Mr. Sawchuck, can we see what it looks like when I do just dry sand? Because it could be different. It's not different, but I'll show you. With just the dry sand there, that was the sand. That wasn't me, I promise. We're going to go ahead and add water here, and we're going to see what happens. So as the water gets added, we start to see it break apart. It's getting eroded, it's moving down, and it's getting deposited down at the bottom. Deposition. Cool. So we've got weathering, erosion, and deposition happening here. There's one other thing that I feel like would be cool. By the way, this is not part of the, the lab, but if you want to uh, stay tuned in and listen, you can absolutely stay tuned in and listen because this part's pretty cool. And that is that the root structures on plants will actually allow them to keep the form of the dirt around them, which is kind of neat. Uh, these are plants that I left in here over Thanksgiving break, and they uh, didn't make it, sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and just add some water like I should have over break if I would have been a good friend and watered these plants. So as I water the plants, I'm seeing that the root structure is still staying the same. It looks like it's tipping, but is it tipping from the dirt or is it tipping from the sand? Well, let's take a look. Down here underneath, we've still got that beautiful cottage cheese container shape and the sand is actually a divot. I don't know if you can see it from the camera that showed up right there. So let's take this one step further. Let's go ahead and put the roots on this rock and see if they move very much now. Not seeing a whole lot of movement, but we'll give it a second. It's very interesting. I wonder if I could use this to answer part of question number four with the relationship between understanding how weathering erosion deposition works and real world application. What did I change? from having the roots just on the sand versus having the roots on the rock. What was that big changing thing? It starts with an F, ends with an foundation. That's right, the foundation changed that up so that I'm not dealing with working on sand anymore. I was working on nice rock. So interesting thing. Gross, my hands are yucky. Just thought you guys might want a second look at our super cool, amazing, awesome, fun weathering erosion deposition lab.
We'll see you in class.